this is a relatively new facility for us. We're still in the construction phase. We've dealt with a lot of different layouts of different feedlots, and it seems like this layout of this feedlot, which was designed by Temple Grandin, seems to flow really nice. We like to work a lot of these cattle horseback, and a lot of the curves in, in these alley systems and then the ultimate curve and the solid sides to the single file coming up to the chute was real appealing to us. We were able to work it horseback all the way to the chute if you choose. The cattle seemed to flow through it very well. The layout of this design and the way the alleys curve and the animals seem to always be flowing around the next corner seems to be very agreeable with the animals and they want to travel through it. In a situation like we're in right now where we've just weaned these calves and we need to get them processed and we need to get them through the facility as quickly as we can and then back on to feed to have a facility that they really flow through nice and that we can do it as timely as possible is just huge. We don't have to do much adjusting to go from a small calf to a larger cow in this facility and they all seem to flow very well through it. It is a lot of construction and we, we spend a lot of money here and, and there's a lot to it. So far we've been very pleased with it. Cheapest way we could find to build this feedlot was the uh, two and seven eighths oil field pipe with that continuous panel, that pretty quick, easy way to put a fence up. And then we're using used guardrail from highway projects that pretty cheap for a feed bunk. Use that as uh, one side of the form actually. Pipe and guardrail, continuous panel. That's about the um, most cost effective way to put a corral up that we could find. Action. <laughs> right now I'm making a, a weld on this top rail and we're expanding the feedlot. So we're putting up more top rail and then we're going to hang some continuous panels and putting all these overheads in for gates. It's better to have the overhead across there because without it, the gate post will sag. No matter how deep you put the gate post, we found they still sag. So it's worth all the time and effort to put them overheads in. Those concrete culverts are just a reject culvert that we picked up for next to nothing. Some of them are six foot deep, some of them are eight foot deep. The bigger diameter, the better we found uh, for freezing up water. And we stand them on end and plumb all the fittings up from the bottom and then fill them in with uh, about a foot of concrete in the, in the bottom. They work pretty good. In the winter time, uh, in the dead of winter, we do have to chip some of them away in the early mornings, but then after the calves rush the water tank, it keeps a, a fresh supply of water coming in and that, that groundwater is a little warmer than the outside air temp, so it helps keep things thawed out throughout the daytime. So there's no electricity to any of them. They have a overflow pipe with a supply water pipe on them and, and they're all on grade and the overflow goes back to a common point back there groundwater that's pumped into those tanks. It's natural groundwater that comes out of the field, the, the field drains, tile drain. Supply line is pumped from a, a tile drain manhole. We got a lot of groundwater in this particular area. There's a lot of seepage from the canal that's above us. And then of course all groundwater coming from the pivot, the irrigated ground filtrating through the soil. It's pumped from one manhole, the overflow pipes flow back to that manhole as well. And actually the overflow doesn't get re-pumped. It goes on down the drain and then uh, the pump only takes the fresh water coming in. We do that just in case a float hangs up. Actually all these valves have a little bleeder screw that allows a little bit of water to continuously flow through them. And that helps keep them thawed out in the winter time. Man, I miss Dudley. 
We didn't have to shovel near as much on when Dudley was running it. Yeah, Is Dudley here yet? Yeah, oh, huh. thank goodness. We pour that cement along the bunk because it gives a firm footing for the calves to stand on. Without that concrete there, they sit there and eat and they pee in the same spot and they poop right there and it just turns into soup right next to the bunk. We've all dealt with feedlots that have not had a pad here and the cattle are either standing you know, knee deep in mud or they're, they're working that dirt out of there all the time and you're constantly having to replace that dirt back in there. And so these have been a huge benefit. The cattle really appreciate having these pads to stand on and to eat at the bunks. We put that concrete in and it's on a kind of a slope. So the manure and urine uh, slope off the concrete into the back part of the corral. And then we come along and, and scrape that with the track hoe and then pile it up into a pile of manure and make compost out of that. It's well worth the investment of the cost of the concrete. It's splatter. the splatter that matters because the more splatter you've got, the more the concrete will flow. I gotcha. And what do you tell the crew? You tell the crew that more splatter, less chatter. We get a lot of this pipe from t uh, Rattlesnake Ridge up there. So a lot of it is just scrap tubing that um, is no good to them and they, they sell it for basically scrap iron prices. A lot of people around here like it because you can build so much stuff out of this. It's a little bit uh, hard to deal with sometimes. Sometimes it's pretty rusty. So a lot of times it's magnetized, so it, it wants to spit your rod back at you when you're welding it. It's something we've just gotten used to. But usually after you make the first pass with the welder, it kind of, that something about the heat, I think, takes the magnetization out of it. Is that a word, magnetization? Anyway, it's not magnetized anymore after that. As bad. That is one heck of a gap. I don't know who saddled that one, but and probably John put that on the post crooked right there. This is a old junky piece of welding rod I'm trying to use up because I can't stand to throw it away. And the cows don't really care what the weld looks like, so as long as it stays together, we're not, we're not too worried about it. And cut. So I can't believe that Dan Miller actually bought lunch. Is that correct? He did. I think it was a stolen credit card. Yeah, I, I was going to say it.